Hey everyone, it's John Pinson coming to you from Oakland headquarters. Today I want to share my opinion on the top five most underrated areas to live near Vancouver. And mind you, this is not for first time home buyers. This is for people that are well established, have a, a solid career and can afford a home over $1.2 million and up to $2 million. This is not video to find the cheapest homes. I want to really show well established neighborhoods, but under the radar that are kind of secret still in my opinion. So let's get started with the number five today. First, we have Horseshoe Bay in West Vancouver. So everyone bypasses Horseshoe Bay when they're on the way to Squamish and Whistler for a ski trip or a golf trip in the summer. And also if you're going to Nanaimo, you always stop at the Horseshoe Bay Ferry Terminal. But people kind of always overlook living in Horseshoe Bay. Everyone kind of goes to Dundrave and Ambleside for a coffee and walks the seawall down there. However, Horseshoe Bay is actually a gem in my opinion. You have a beautiful Glen Eagles nine hole golf course, which is ranked one of the best nine hole golf courses in Canada. And you have all these actually secret coves to explore and little swimming areas, beaches yeah, that you can find in the summer. I was just golfing the other day at Glen Eagles Golf Course and I had a secret shared from one of the people that live in the neighborhood, how there's a pathway down beside one of the golf holes, right down to a little secret beach and cove with a tennis court right overlooking the ocean. Now I haven't checked this out yet, but there are supposedly many of these um, cool little coves around Horseshoe Bay, which you couldn't really find as much on Ambleside Dundrive, where there's more people all over the place. And there's beautiful oceanside homes in Horseshoe Bay, and you can still get them for around $2 million, which is unheard of in West Van, where you're looking at three and a half, four million dollars $4 million for comparable properties. So not a cheap place to live, but definitely a good place to find if you want to get good value for being on the North Shore still. Number four, I have Steveston. It is on the southern west tip of Richmond. And if you haven't been to Steveston, I re highly recommend just doing a day trip there. It's a fun old cannery fishing village, and it's hosted many movie sets, and it's got a real nice charm to it. Mind you, homes are not cheap here as well. They're $1.5 to $2 million dollars as well so you will probably need some help from mom and dad for a big down payment because if you're just starting out it's gonna be hard to crack the market in uh, Stevenson but definitely a good place to raise a family and definitely solid investment in the future with definitely good high schools and schools good restaurants go there and check it out there's a beautiful docks so you can go down for fish and chips on the water and definitely a really nice relaxing area of Richmond not much traffic they have four-way stops in the center of town very very safe neighborhood to raise kids number three today I have is Fort Langley. So Fort Langley is a rustic farm country-ish area on the north side of Highway 1 out towards Abbotsford and Fort Langley has been under the radar for a long time for buying but it's become very actually popular in the past couple years so it's not the most underrated but I did want to share with you because not everyone thinks of Fort Langley when they move out to the suburbs. In my opinion a lot of people don't mention it they say I want to move to Mission or Abbotsford or Chilliwack even but Fort Langley you can still find beautiful homes there for one and a half million dollars and really beautiful ones for two million dollars. Actually I just sold one six months ago for two million dollars a beautiful 4,000 square foot house on a one acre property. Mind you, prices have dramatically gone up, so it's probably worth two and a half million dollars now, but definitely beautiful areas of Fort Langley to, to explore and really cool little coffee shops and uh, restaurants in the downtown core of Fort Langley. It's a very small little area, but it looks really cool and rustic and highly re recommend checking out Fort Langley if you haven't been out to this area of the lower mainland. And number two pick I have for the most underrated area is Bone Island. Bone Island has been on a surf in the past year but before this year it's been really under the radar it is picking up steam in terms of popularity it's a great place to raise kids it has the highest per capita amount of kids in Canada for the elementary school uh, compared to many homes uh, or in the area and it has ferries every hour to Horseshoe Bay and uh, the crossing is only 20 minutes long mind you I would have made Bone Island number one if it wasn't just for the wind delays in the winter where ferries can be cancelled so it's not the most consistent place to live if you need to get to the office in downtown Vancouver, people are going to be coming back to work in September on a regular basis. If you can't work from home full time, then it's not the number one pick in my opinion, but it's pretty darn close. It feels like you are in the middle of nowhere. There's no traffic lights or anything. And uh, it's just a really nice community. I had a family move there a couple of years ago and they're really loving it. And they commute a couple times a week out to Vancouver for uh, appointments and work. And I see Bone Island still growing in the future. And they also have a beautiful nine hole golf course if you like golf and a frisbee golf course and a really nice Italian restaurant I've been to before. And yeah, 
uh, definitely recommend Bone Island if uh, you haven't been so already. And if definitely if you're having thinking about raising kids, definitely a really awesome spot to consider. And number one is where I grew up, Tawasson, and there's a little community called Beach Grove, and it faces um, Boundary Bay. It's close to the beach, and it has really nice walking trails. That's on a dike. You can walk all the way or bike to White Rock, actually, Crescent Beach, and beautiful sunrises and nice nature, super quiet, super safe neighborhood. You have Beach Grove Elementary School right there, and you have Tawasson High School, which is about a five to 10 minute drive away. And you have really nice 18 hole private golf course nearby there, and you can still have this nice, really neighborhood charm of everyone knowing each other. It was originally just a cabin area before, but in the past 10, 15 years, it has become more popular with young families and raising kids, and definitely, I see a lot of excitement in Beach Grove where young families get to know each other. And so if you want to raise a family and you want to get to know your neighbors and have a good sense of community, no better place than, in my opinion, than Beach Grove in Tawasson, which is a part of City of Delta, which includes Ladner and North Delta, which is also a great community, in my opinion. Yeah, so if you're just... Uh, trying to kind of brainstorm and trying to figure out where to go besides the common places of Edgemont, North Vancouver, Kitsilano, New Westminster. Everyone knows these places, but these little areas of Horseshoe Bay, Beach Grove, Fort Langley, these are real gems in my opinion. Uh, they have a lot of charm, good neighborhoods. They're all very safe to raise a family and to live, and they're really good investment for the future. Unfortunately, some of these areas used to be much more affordable even a couple of years ago, but with the pandemic, everyone's put a premium on a detached house and it's gonna be moving forward in the future uh, at a higher premium, I'm sure as well. So hope you found this of value. If you smash the like button down below and I'll see you in the next video. And thanks and have a great day.